Hey, Chazan15 here. This week's movie is the wondrous spy thriller Tinker Tailor Soldier. Spy. Now, this is a remake of a. Well, it's not so much a remake, it's a new adaptation of a classic book that had previously been done as a film. Now, this is one of those films where it's good. You know it's good. But, the big but is with the viewer. Because you really have to be the sort of person who likes these sorts of films. Basically, I went, I watched. I think I would have found the material engaging, were I inclined to watch these sorts of films. But, alas, I'm not really into the whole thriller genre. It's a fantastic film nonetheless, so, you know, it's one of those films that you have to see just to say you've seen it. Whether or not it's any good is irrelevant. But, personally, I think it's quite fantastic, and a brilliant example of its genre. Shame I'm not into it. Right. Now, I always find the title is fun, because about three quarters of the way into the film, the explanation for the code names is brought up in terms of how they came up with it. And they used a rhyme that was known to everyone in England in the 70s. Here's the thing. Nobody knows that rhyme anymore. Not in the younger generation, anyway. Basically, we've come to associate it so much with this book that... <laughs> the actual original rhymes disappeared from the vernacular. It's something along the lines of Tinker, Tailor, Soldier, Sailor, Rich Man, Poor Man, I think there might be a Doctor in there? And Spy. Now, there are also some... Basically, it showed a fascinating window into MI6 I think it is? Yes, semi six. MI six in the seven early seventies. Early to mid seventies. But anyway, um it's a fascinating example of this point in time because you've got a world of espionage which has been going on for so long that they're now changing the guard. And having been in organizations where I've witnessed the changing of the guard, it's important that it's a smooth succession, and the thing about this film is it's not a smooth succession this time. The other thing is, because this is a world that is very well established and historically researched, they sometimes don't feel the need to explain certain things. It took a long time for me to establish that Carla is pretty much, as far as I can tell, the KGB equivalent of Control, or C, as we know him. Now, the other thing which got me about the film was, yes, the lenses were beautiful, the photography was lovely, however, you've got to admit, the colour palette was very, very, very drab. I know the patterns in the 70s were loud, but this is decaying browns and greys. I know to some extent it's to set the scene, that the idea that in both cases we are living in a decaying system, both in the East and the West in this period, but that's extent. It also helps contribute to the idea that everybody involved is tired tired of this dang double war. This war that never heats up. But yes. And I've apparently rambled on quite for a lot. Um, right. MI6 is apparently weirder and wackier than I thought. But they're fun and entertaining nonetheless. They're very much the civil service. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of backroom deals, isn't it? To be honest, I didn't 
actually understand how he got the solution. I think that's part of the elegance of the film. You are shown how he gets to the solution, but you don't explain how... You see the dots, you see the solution, you don't see how the dots joined up. This makes the main character, Smiley's achievement so brilliant, so wonderful, that he finally gets his man. And, you know. And, yes, you understand the significance of certain suspects, well, certain sources of information, and why it's important that we notice that source of information more than the others. But most of the world is dotted up, there's small worlds after all, and it's quite good. And Essentially, in addition to the changing of the guard being documented, in the 70s, it also documents probably the worst mistake in political history, especially in regards to British intelligence. The idea of getting in bed with the Americans was a bad, bad idea. But we did it nonetheless, and we live with the consequences. Um... Yeah. The locales were interesting. It's noticeable that there's very little difference between the East and the West, which is perfect because in reality there was very little visible difference between the two. Which is quite nice to see. Um, the difference is who was there, not what was there. Um, yeah, it's about it really I mean it's a fantastic film I'm just not into that sort of film I watched it because I needed to watch it it's yeah it's a nice enough film well worth watching but yeah anyway um yeah I'm signing off now because I'll just ramble on with nothing to say anyway cheerio chaps have fun Through a pip